Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming with to you guys with another MAC collection haul. Um, I did pick this collection up last week on its release date on Thursday, but unfortunately I had to work, um, you know, all day Thursday and Friday, and then I went to a cottage over the weekend, so I haven't had time to film a video for you guys showing this collection until now. So I'm sorry it's up a little bit late, but I hope you guys, um, you know, still get use out of this and still can see the products and decide if they're for you or not. So, um, one thing I will really quickly preface this by saying is that I personally have not used any of these products. Everything that I'm showing you is still in box, unused, untouched. Um, so this video is just going to be initial swatches and thoughts about it. Um, not so much on reviewing how it works or, you know, how I found it or anything like that. However, the product released on Thursday last week, so I'm just playing with a random um, eyeliner pen that I used to film another video. So, like I said, the products did release uh, last Thursday, and on that day I went to pick it up at my local Mac, and my really good friend Jill works there, and she did my full face of makeup using these products, and from my experience watching her use them and you know, the results that she got, they are phenomenal. I'll get into it in a little bit more detail as I go through all of the products, but based off just that, I can say that they are worth getting. Um, you know, the shadows blended out beautifully. You get a beautiful collection of colors. Uh, the lip products, again, are gorgeous. And what, I wasn't alive then, but she kind of said it. they felt exactly like lipsticks uh, in the 80s. I don't really know what that means. So if anybody knows what she's talking about, let me know. But they are really, really comfortable. They're not sticky. I mean, I've only worn two of them but they're fantastic. Um, and then the face products are exactly what you always come to expect from Mac. So of course the collection I'm talking about is the Jeremy Scott collection with Mac. And even if you're just a collector of makeup and you like to have makeup that has amazing packaging, get your hands on this collection. Uh, the packaging alone is probably the coolest packaging I've ever seen Mac do. I know I say that a lot. Um, but I say it more in terms of like, oh, the Mac Holiday Collection was so beautiful and classic in gold. No, that is not what I mean here. This collection is so cool and you will see what I mean in a second. So the first part of this collection that was released was a face compact. And uh, normally when I do this, I already have all the products out of the boxes ready to show you not today. I left them in the packaging um, because you need to see it. So the first thing was this face compact. It's a three and it's called Acoustica. There's an iridescent powder for highlighting in the shade Heaven in Your Smile. There's a bronzing powder in the shade Acoustica and it is a matte bronzing powder. And then there's a powder blush in Wall of Desire and it is a satin. Now, if you were alive in the 90s, you will recognize even this box alone. This is how all CDs used to come. So when you, uh, it looks exactly like a compact disc container. Um, if you're older, you might not have done that because you might always download music, but you still can get CDs some places. And this is what it looks like. So this is called Cheeky Volume 1 Mixtape. It looks exactly like a CD-ROM. And then the back is like this holographic. So it looks like that absolutely stunning and then you open it up and it is magnetized also so uh really really secure there is I'm just trying to get the the plastic key covering so there is i don't want to blind you guys there is a mirror inside that's actually pretty big and pretty clear i gotta say this is what the products look like so you get your highlighter your bronzer and your blush and i have worn all of these and they are absolutely stunning. Um, I wasn't originally going to do this. I was going to swatch all at the end, but I think I'm going to swatch as I go just so we can move from one thing to the next, just so um, I can clean my arm off and my fingers off in the meantime. So this first thing that I'm going to swatch is the blush. And as I said, this is in the shade Wall of Desire. You guys see that? I'm sorry the lighting kind of sucks. I'm filming this at night. Hopefully you guys can kind of still see that. It's a really, really, really subtle kind of like pink salmon sort of a tone. Do you guys see that there? I really hope so. I'm so sorry. Uh, and because it is a satin, there is a itty bitty little bit. I don't know if you guys are going to see this either. 
there we go, of sheen to it. I think you guys can see there. So it does pick up with a little bit of sheen on your wrist as well. And it looks absolutely stunning on your cheeks, um, particularly if you're a little fair, but if you had a darker complexion, I could see that looking absolutely beautiful as well. So the next thing is a matte bronzer in the shade Acoustica. Looks like that. And just like that. And it is a super, super warm toned, like brown bronzer. There's not a lot of orange in it, which for me is fantastic because I've mentioned this before. I used to use this MAC bronzer called Give Me Sun, I'm pretty sure. And I don't know what I was thinking because it was so orange all the time. And like, no matter what I did, I would show up looking like a pumpkin. And I, I don't know why I used it for so long. It was totally the wrong shade for me. And this last one is a highlighter. And this is in... Da, 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 heaven in your smile and this is absolutely gorgeous I mean almost all MAC highlighters are amazing none of them really disappoint uh, this one certainly does not that's it right there it is absolutely stunning that highlighter so those are the three colors in the cheek palette now any prices I give you are going to be in Canadian dollars so if you're American you'll just have to do the conversion so for the cheek times three acoustica sorry I'm just putting the little um, like plasticky thing with the names on it. So for this, this retails for $41 Canadian. Um, but you do get a fair amount of product. Um, the, um, the blush and the highlight are both, oh, they're all different. Well, that's annoying. So you get, uh, two grams of highlighter, you get 3.9 grams of bronzer and 3.3 grams of blush, which actually makes sense because you use blush bronzer on more of your face than you do on blush than you do on highlighters so that's that first part of that collection and even the case even like is plasticky and feels like those cases so the second part of the collection that came out was a lip compact and it is a lip I can't even get this shut now come on so it is a lip times nine and it looks like a little cassette tape absolutely adorable this is called future emotions and as I said it came with it has nine lipsticks inside. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six mattes. And then you also get three amplified cream lipsticks in here as well. So I will open this up. Same thing. It comes in like the little um, case to make it look like a real cassette, which is awesome. And this is what it looks like. Bump and jams is what it says. And same thing, it is also magnetized, which is good. So if you were ever to carry this around in your purse, it would not open. Now, the one gripe that I have about this product, and it is, I don't know how much it matters. Uh, it mattered to me. So for this lip product, it is a lip palette. I do try not to blind you guys for real. So these are the colors you get in it. They are absolutely amazing. Okay, I have two gripes about this palette. Gripe number one. Um, the layout. I get the point of the layout. It's supposed to look like sound bars or volume bars or whatever those things are called. I get that, but I don't like that there's, it looks like there's enough space in here for three more lipsticks. I feel like they could have either put three more in or maybe given bigger pans of the nine that they chose and spread them out a little more. Um, either of those things would have made me happy because I get why it's in the shape it is, um, to make it look like a cassette, but I think that there would have been better layout. Although I do kind of see the cutesy point that they were going for. And it does have a mirror as well. Same thing. I'm going to try not to blind you guys. The other problem that I have with this is that it does not come with a lip brush. And I don't know about you guys, but I do not use a ton of lip products in palettes. Um, so I think I have one lip brush and I'm not even a big fan of it. So when I pick this up, oh, I did also pick up a MAC lip brush. This happens to be the travel one. So basically how it works is it comes in this whole... Um, little container and then you pull it out the container pops on the end to make it like a normal size brush um, The bonus about this one over the retractable one is that the retractable one can sometimes kind of get dusty in the um, Like where it retracts and if you leave it in your purse, it can pick stuff up whereas this one's pretty sealed in here tight so one and only gripe about this is Like I said that I wish that they had maybe decided to put a lip brush in it But they didn't so whatever. In terms of the colors, there are two colors in here for sure that I know are permanent line colors that I actually have tried before. The other ones, I don't totally know if they're limited edition or not, but so the colors are Morange, which is for sure 
a regular color. This one is in Carmine Rouge. You've got Violetta. Breathing Fire is another permanent collection color. Happy Song. This one is my favorite up here. This nude one is in Living in Stereo. And then you've got uh, Wild Memories. What's this one called? Nightclub School. And, oh, this dark one at the bottom is in Digging It. So in terms of swatching these, I was trying to debate if I wanted to just use my fingers and do them or use the brush. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my mom was on the phone. In the meantime, I was at least able to go and grab some makeup wipes, so that will be helpful. Uh, like I said, originally I didn't know how I wanted to swatch these colors for you guys. Like, I know I want you guys to see them. I just can't decide if I want to... Do I want to do lip swatches? No, and the reason I'm not going to do lip swatches is because I already struggle enough when it's lipstick and this would take a freaking long time because I'll have to clean the brush off between every single one. So I'm going to, it hurts my soul, but I'm going to just stick my finger in it and we're going to swatch that way. I'm going to swatch it down my arm so you guys can see the color. So like I said, the first, I'm going to try and show you guys which ones are which as well. Da, 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 da. Okay, so the only three that are amplifieds are Violetta, sorry you guys can see crap on my desk, uh, Morange, and also Nightclub School, so this middle one here. So I am going to swatch the colors for you guys on my arm, show you guys what they look like. So this first one here, this is in Carmine Rouge. really really pretty red next one is one of those permanent colors it's in orange oh come on camera focus now considering how long I've been a matte girl I've never actually had that color because I always thought it was too orange for me but now I have it so I can kind of see this one is in Violetta and when I'm swatching it on my hand it almost looks more of like a gloss but it is an amplified that's a really, really pretty color. There is a little bit of reflex in it, just so you guys know. Um, next one is in Breathing Fire. This one I actually do own in regular edition. It's a super bright pink. Right there. And I know too on camera that this red looks a little bit pink, but it's just a really deep kind of blue tone red. Um, but it is still red. Uh, this next one is in Happy Song. really really pretty light pink it kind of reminds me a little bit of please me in their regular line next one is my favorite one this is living in stereo it is the nude of the palette oh camera focus there we go looks like that there I like that when I swatch too I end up curving down almost every single time so back up to the top this dark dark color is in digging it I don't know how much use I'm going to get out of this color it's a little too dark of a brown for me but you never know I thought that about a lot of colors and I turned around to them this next one is night club school this is the last of the amplifieds and this one is stunning it's like a really deep deep red absolutely love that and this last one is in wild memories and it is another one in the red family like that so these are the nine colors you can get uh, these ones are pr fairly similar to each other when they're swatched out this one is a little bit more pinky toned I find than this one um, but they maybe could have put another color in there don't know what exactly but um, maybe something that would be my only gripe but like I said these are the same as their normal formula they go on really well as long as you don't mind using a lip pencil to do it and or a lip brush excuse me and this retails for $41 as well um I do know that this collection seems a little bit pricey compared to some of their other ones but I think that's just a lot of it because of the packaging and because you do get a lot in them like I said you get nine look at my arm now you get nine lipsticks in that palette um and uh yeah like I said the packaging is absolutely stunning so the last part of this collection I saved the best for last is of course the eyeshadow palette and it is a thing of beauty there are 29 shadows in this palette uh, this is the most pricey part of the collection it is 
expensive for a palette. This was $98. Um, to me, worth it for sure. But, um, you know, if you... I'll explain why I think it's worth it and why I don't think it's worth it all at the same time. Um, again, it looks just like the, um, what did Jill tell me? It looks like the Mac Sal containers, which I thought was kind of clever because it's like Mac and then Sal. I don't know if they intended to do that. Maybe, maybe her telling me was her way of saying yes, they did. So the first thing you guys need to see about this is the packaging, which is phenomenal. They did a really good job packaging this palette too. So if you do order it online, it'll ship to you really safely. This is the palette. And it is so friggin' cool. So it's meant to look like an old, like, boom box or, like, you know, you know. I don't know how many people were alive when they had these. I had one. This was, like, my first CD player. Um, I'll show you guys all of the detail on it. So up here it says eyeshadow times 29. Mac Jeremy Scott. You can even see, like, the little radio dial up top, which is... Like, it even says frequency modulation and medium wave. Like, the detail on this is just absolutely insane. They spared no expense. It is a metal case, really hard. Considering how big it is, it is actually pretty thin. Um, so I could see it being okay for travel with the exception of maybe the handle. Like, if the handle pushed in, that would be kind of cool. Um, so I will show you guys. I can't even get it open right now. It's also magnetized has a really big mirror inside which I will try not to show you guys so you guys don't get blinded this I'm trying to show you guys it the proper way this is the problem okay this is what the palette looks like so this one definitely is made to look like sound bars you get a ton of color variety in here and I like that they grouped it together too so you got your purples your blues your kind of greens and yellows neutrals pinks little oranges and some golden colors at the end. Like I said, this has, you can see me. Hello. Um, this has a huge, huge mirror in it. It does fingerprint like crazy, which is going to really annoy me. Same as everything else. It comes with the little sheet that has all the names on it. So the reason that I could see so, okay, let's start off with what I really like about the palette. I love the color variation. I love, love, love the packaging it is absolutely stunning what I could see there being to gripe about this palette is that considering you're spending $98 on this huge freaking palette you are not getting very big pans the pans are only 14.5 uh, grams each they are fairly small considering all of the empty space again I know why it's empty space I know where they were going with this I love the idea but the like it makes total sense. It looks absolutely beautiful. As a collector's piece, this is fantastic, but from a practical standpoint, it doesn't totally make sense to have 29 shadows in a thing this big where there's so much empty space. Similar to what I was saying about the compact disc, or excuse me, the um, cassette tape, there's so much empty space in here that they could have, you know, added more shadows or made these shadows bigger or something. That would be my only gripe about this. The other thing that I will say before I swatch, and this is just off basically what Jill and I were discussing when I was there, is a big complaint that a lot of people have about MAC products is that um, when they put out limited edition stuff, the quality of the shadows is just not as good as the regular line. And for the most part, they're right. But MAC seems to have finally heard all of our prayers and uh, remedied that for this palette because on my first initial... And I'll double check this one. I swatch it myself. But on first impression, when I was in the store, when I was swatching it, and when I was watching her put it on my eyes, this is amazing, amazing quality. And like I said, the color selection just cannot be beat. So I'm trying to see how many of what you get. So I'm going to just come back to the box. So it looks like there's a good mix of satins and mattes. And it looks like a frost. That's it. So satin, mattes, and frost. But that's, oh, and there's a Velux Pearl, a couple of those, three of those, a luster. So yeah, there's a bunch in here. Uh, I will try and tell you guys what they are as I go through them. I, again, have the little slippy slip. So we will start from one side and work our way over. This might be a long process. I might have to do double swatching on my arm. We're going to get through it. So I'm going to start here and work our way this way. So this first color, sorry if you get blinded, right here is in lo-fi. It is a satin and it's kind of like a beige cream color. 
looks like that and let's watch it here right there sorry the the color over it is a uh, lipstick but you guys can see a little bit of the shimmer there it is a light color definitely on me it's very close to my natural skin tone but it would be beautiful as an all over the lid color so the color below it is in creative copper and this is absolutely stunning it is like this be i don't know why copper it looks more gold to me this is a luster finish and just absolutely stunning the quality of that one is gorgeous from here it looks more coppery but when i had it on my finger it looked more gold i don't know and then the last one in that first little row is in the shade bite the beat and it is a matte shadow and it is like a kind of muted tan brown color like that these like i can just tell from swatching those first three that was was that one of everything? Yeah. Oh, almost, except for the Velux Pearls. But like the quality of all of them is spot on and the colors are amazing. So that was these first three here. Now we're going to go into the second row. So that first one on the second row is an Endless Frequency. This is a matte shadow. It's kind of like a peachy sort of salmon kind of tone. That one is a little less, uh, I'm going to double swatch it. I normally don't like to do that, but it doesn't show up quite as much as I want. Yeah, it's still not. Maybe that's just the way the shade is. So it's right there. That's probably the first one I've been a little disappointed in, but at the same time, I'm sure it's really, really buildable. And the next one is in Disco Therapy. This is another matte, and it is like a bright orange kind of a color. Just like that. The other problem too that I could be having with watching them on my arm is I did just wipe them down with a cloth because it does feel really smooth running it across my arm, which is kind of weird. That could be the other issue. It could be all me. Sorry. So then we're going to get into the row of like the pinks and the reds. So the first one on the top is in Superior Sound. Ooh, it's so soft. Uh, it must be. What are you, friend? It's a frost. So it's kind of like a pinkish white kind of a frost. It is picking up really white on camera, but it does have a little bit of pink in it as well. And it is absolutely stunning. And I can actually say that being a really, really pretty highlighter as well, if you like that. Next one in this row, keep putting it on top of this, is Happy Song. So that's that same name, I believe, as the one that was in the lip one. Do -do 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 yep, yep. So it has the same name as that one. And it is kind of like a baby pink. So it's just underneath. I don't know if you guys can even see that at all. This one was really light. There we go. A little bit better there, maybe. No, not at all. I can see it, but I don't know how well you guys can. Um, so I think that the first thing I'm noticing is that the colors that are disappointing are the lighter ones, but those tend to be the ones that swatch less and that you know going in aren't going to be as pigmented because those are the ones you normally use all over your lid. So I don't know if I'm that upset by it. Next one is in Bird's Eye View. It is this bright, beautiful pink. Yeah, there's that quality coming back right there. I'm going to give my fingers a little wipe because they're getting stained. Okay, the next one down is in Walking Heartbeats, and it is a red. That one was a little disappointing as well, but um, red eyeshadows are really hard to do, and I mean, it did stain my finger completely. Red eyeshadows, for whatever reason, because of the pigmentation they put in it, do tend to kind of come out a little bit patchy and crazy. Um, I could see it working a lot better on a brush. Actually, you know what? I am going to try that. I'm going to pick it up on a brush and just see if it works a lot better. Okay, I just grabbed a random eyeshadow brush that I just happen to have. See how pigmented it looks on the brush? Let's just kind of put it right next to it and just see. I mean, pretty much the same, I would say. Um, that definitely looks like it's going to be a more buildable color. So that's with a brush and that's without. So the next and last color on that row, oh my god, this one's so soft, is in Vacation Speed Zone. And I do know that this one is also a Velux Pearl. It's almost kind of like got a like maroon purple kind of a tone going to it. Oh yeah, that one's beautiful. I do tend to always like shimmers better in palettes, but that's just a me thing. I know a lot of people are really into mattes. Um, so now we're going to get into that longest row here in the middle, like the neutrals. 
The first one is in Ghost Story. It is a Frost. This one is very, very similar to um, the one that we did on the last row, Superior Sound. It's just a little bit more white. I'm going to swatch it down here. So it's a lot more sheer, has some more blue in it. And I'm also going to just swatch it next to this one just to see eh, how much of a difference there is. Not really. Um, so there's another gripe. They could have put another color in that wasn't so similar. Maybe a flat white would have been really nice. Uh, next color is going to be Morning Ticket. This is a V-Lux Pearl again. It's kind of got some silver to it. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Hope you guys are seeing these okay. I'm so sorry that I'm filming it so late. I just wanted to get this up to you so that if you guys were thinking of getting this palette, you at least had some videos to look at to decide if you want it or not, because it isn't cheap. It would be an investment if you decided to buy it. Uh, so the next one is the Us Dance Remix, which is another Velux Pearl. This one's more of like, it's kind of in between a gold and a silver. Okay, next is, I keep looking at the wrong place, uh, Subtly Elegant. It's kind of like a gray tone brown. I was going to say I thought that this one would be more similar to this one, but they are uh, quite a bit different. This one's more warm and this one's more cool toned, so that's kind of nice. It gives you, this is the other thing I really like about this palette, is you definitely get a good variety of warm and cool toned shadows. Uh, I know a lot of palettes do tend to stick to one or the other, so that's kind of nice that you get a bit of both in this one. This one is in bonus track. It is like a darker, bronzier kind of color, and it is a frost. I'm running out of arm room. Oh my goodness. That one is beautiful. I say that every time I do like a frost or a Velux pearl. So I think I'm going to have to start swatching like bleh, 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 down my other side of my arm uh, just to keep going. So this next one is beautifully charred. This one is another frost. I'll do one more down here on my elbow. It's a really deep chocolatey kind of brown. Next one is Raven Eyed. This is like going to be the black, but it kind of almost has a bit of a brown tone to it, so I don't really know. What do you guys think? It is black. It's not like the most pigmented black I've ever seen in my life, um, but I find a lot of people have problems with that. Even MAC, like even MAC Carbon, you have to build, I find. Last color in this row is Video Emotions. It's like a really dark, dark, purpley brown that almost looks the same as that black. There's a little difference to it. It's picking up, when I pick it up on my finger, it's picking up really, really well. Um, I think I'm gonna do it again where I play with a brush and see how it turns out because, so I'll do it with that black first. I just wanna see how it goes on with a brush. Yeah, pretty much the same. And then the purpley kind of one. I mean, that one went on a little bit thicker and a little bit more consistency once I had a brush, but still not incredible. So we're on to the last three rows. So we're going to do the greens first. I'm just going to wipe my fingers off again. Okay. First one is in Memories of Space. It is the bright yellow of the palette. I didn't even know what I was going to call it. It is a matte, really. So it's a matte, but it looks like it's got a little bit of shimmer in it, so that's kind of weird. So it is a really, really bright yellow. I'm super excited about this. Um, okay, we'll put it right. Oh, that's really pretty. It actually turned out fairly yellow. Like, I hate the way that I have this on my arm, but, like, it's actually quite, quite pigmented of a yellow. Next color below that is, like, a... It looks like almost like an olive lime green. It's in Remixology, which is really soft, and it is another matte. I picked a chunk of it up evidently. That's okay. Um, okay. That one's really nice as well. And last one in that row is the darkest green. It is in Betalica. 
that is stunning. It's like a deep, deep forest green. Let's kind of just see how it swatches. I'm just going to start swatching in random places and hope you guys can see. Holy. So the dark colors, that one is definitely the most pigmented uh, so far. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm really excited to play with some of these colors in this palette. So now we're going to get into kind of like the blues and the mints kind of colors. So the first one is in thin th Synthesize, but I spelled like E-Y-E-S, which is kind of funny because I also just started a new series today, uh, which is where this eye look came from. So if you want to see it, keep an eye out for, you for that. I'm calling it my randomized palette, but spelled kind of like that with E-Y-E-S. So that's kind of funny that that happened. So yeah, this first one is called thin Synthesize. It's like a frosty blue minty kind of color super super pretty and that was i'm betting it was oh it's a satin i was gonna say frost i would have been wrong next one which is my favorite color in the whole palette is oldie but goody and this is like your pure pure mint green and this is having the hardest time finding these a matte shadow totally out of space you guys I'm so sorry I suck so bad right there eh, that one's okay it's really pretty I can see it building really really well but off first watches it's kind of like me whatever uh next one is powerful performance it's more of like an it kind of reminds me of like aquadisiac by mac maybe a little bit brighter for sure brighter this is a satin where can I swatch so you guys can see it? Can you see if I swatch? Hmm. There. That's another really, really pretty one. This is getting weird. Can you guys see the colors? Can you see the colors? Am I going to get another bad comment about how I suck at swatching? It's true. Uh, so this next one is called At the Turntable. This is another matte. Holy blue. It's like a robin's egg blue. That is beautiful. Y'all, so I'm so excited to play with this palette. Look at it. <gasps> Ooh. Actually, those colors are pretty similar. That's kind of disappointing. This one's a little bit more greeny based, but pretty similar. Um, but really, really pretty color. Last one in that column is Electric Eel. And it is bright. So this one can go here. Here? We're going to put it right here. Like a dot. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Last row is the purples. Electric Eel, by the way, was a satin, in case you wanted to know. So first one is She's a Machine. It's like a lilac kind of a purple. I am completely out of space. We're going to put it right here. Boom. Boom. Ooh, that's actually really pretty. Next one is a bit deeper of a purple. It is in Jam Session. Which we will put next to this one. That's pretty. And the last one, the very last color, is in Club N Which is that one there. Sorry, I didn't show you guys swatching it. So... Based off all of the swatches, this palette definitely has strengths and it definitely has weaknesses. Uh, like I said, there are a ton of colors in here that you can choose from. Uh, I don't ever like to make a decision on a palette until I see how it actually wears on the eyes. So if you guys are looking for that, I will be doing uh, some sort of a look with these. I've shown you all the colors. I've told you all the names. If you guys have specific colors that you want to see me try and incorporate into a look, please let me know down below. Like I said, this palette is not cheap. It is picking up fingerprints like crazy, which is driving me nuts. Um, and yeah, like I said, uh, it's got hits and misses. Like some of these V-Lux pearls are absolutely gorgeous. The darker colors, these bright, bright colors are really pretty. But then you get into like this. Actually, that's not that bad. It's almost looking better now than it was before. But like this pink and some of the darker colors here were a little splotchy and disappointing. You know, the only thing that I can always tell people is don't take my opinion for it. Um, I am trying to help steer you in whichever direction you choose, whether it be to buy it. I am not disappointed that I picked it up. I am so excited to own it and to play with it. I can tell I'm going to absolutely adore this. I'm going to love the different combinations of colors I can get. I love having palettes that have lots of fun colors um, so that you can create a ton of different looks and they're not 
you know, all the same or you find that you only really get the same look out of one palette because all the colors uh, kind of all blend into one. I don't think that's going to be the case for this. And based off what Jill was able to do with it when I was there last week, I do really, really like it. Um, but like I said, I don't want to steer you in any one direction or the other. It is a lot of money. So the best advice that I can give you is to get to your local Mac store and go and check it out yourself and swatch it. And, you know, especially if maybe you have some stuff to pick up there anyway, if you need a new blush or you need new foundation or something like that, ask them to play around with it on your face if they have time, um, because you're only committed to, I feel like it's a $60 purchase. It might've gone up. I'm not hundred percent sure, but if in the end you end up liking it, use that purchase and buy this. And if not pick things up that you would have needed anyway, that is the best advice I can always give you is as much as I can tell you how much I like something. We all have different opinions. We all have different feelings on things. You might not like it as much as I do. The best advice I can give you is to go and try it out for yourself. Uh, so if you like these kind of videos, then hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.